We're back here on Overtime on WOTM. Mark, the coaching carousel continues to go round and round. This year is a little bit more different because we have not only some big-time jobs opening up, but big-time names being linked to those jobs. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big surprises came last night on Sunday night when Lincoln Riley said in his press conference, yeah, I'm not going to take the LSU job. Nobody thought to ask him to follow up if he has any interest in USC. He's now going to USC out there in the Pac-12. What What's your take here as one of the top coaches in the Big 12 now moves to the Pac-12? It's a good move for him. Mm -hmm. I think it, with their move, uh, Oklahoma moved to the SEC. Right. He could have stayed mm -hmm. and really established himself at Oklahoma. He's a guy that's gotten him to the college football playoff. Yep. Um, it's hard to say whether he's under uh, or underachieved mm -hmm. because when they have made the college football playoff, like they've gotten their butt beat right. sometimes, yep. where, where they've gotten embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So maybe that offsets it a little bit. But what else more did you expect out of him? The only thing he hasn't done is won a national championship. Right. Uh, maybe there's a better shot for him to win one consistently out in the Pac-12 where it's maybe not as – oriented w around Alabama. The whole world doesn't revolve around Alabama right, like right. it kind of does, you know, uh, east of the Mississippi, mm -hmm. um, where it's there, there can be under Rhode Island. You saw with Pete Carroll out there. You can bring that program back to prominence. Right. Now, maybe Pete Carroll didn't do it mm -hmm. as uh, innocently as we thought he did, but right. um, I, all that don't matter now mm -hmm. because, of the, uh, because of the new rules. Mm -hmm. So uh, being out there, it's a, it's a, a good chance for um, – him to really challenge himself and see if he can win uh, in a different conference, a different style of play out there in oh, the yeah. Pac-12. But I think it's really suited for Lincoln Riley's coaching ability, and I think he'll do really good out there. Bryce Young is a guy that came from the state of California. Uh -huh. A lot of the guys from California are jettisoning that state for places like Oklahoma, places like Texas, places mm -hmm. like Alabama, places like Ohio right. State and Michigan. Do you think with Lincoln Riley there that he can now retain a lot of those players, especially there? in the Southern California area and then bring them back to where Pete Carroll had that team when they were rolling and competing for national championships? He's got to show he can win mm -hmm. out there. Uh, I think it's uh, maybe a little too much to say, well, yeah, the state of California says, right. I don't know about that. I think that there's still a lot of pull and a lot of attractiveness of some of those big name schools where if you're growing up in California, that's uh, another thing you got to understand too is now in the last 10, 15 years, people uh, that start playing high school football or, mm -hmm. or peewee football. Everything's like, oh, I want to be a quarterback for Alabama. I want to be the quarterback mm -hmm. for maybe Florida. I want to play in the SEC. I want to play in the Big Ten. Right. Um, it's not as pac 12 -y as it used to be mm -hmm. back when, you know, in the mid-2004, 2005, right. uh, when USC was playing Notre Dame down yeah. there, like game mm -hmm. of the year. Mm -hmm. So until it gets back to that, uh, he's going to have his hands full, but there's just such a deep pool of players to right. choose from out there. Exactly. A whole lot of talent. Here's Lincoln Riley today at his press conference talking about the move to the Trojans. To both our, our current uh, players who had the honor of meeting with uh, about an hour ago uh, and, to our future, and to our future players. Uh, we came here because we believe in what this place can be. And that is because that will be done with the players on the field. And to, to win championships, to get this program to where we all know and believe that it should be, it's going to take every single one of us. So Lincoln Riley is there. Meanwhile, some other uh, jobs opening up, but you had another point there on the Trojans. One thing about Lincoln Riley, he can develop quarterbacks. For sure. Oh, yeah, he can. No and doubt. Exactly. You just take a look at some of the guys here just over the last few yep. years. Jalen Hurts including a lot of guys that are that are in the pros. Let's take a look at the some notable uh, coaching moves here over the, uh, the last, I would say, about a couple of months or a couple of weeks, I should say. You have uh, Lincoln Riley taking that job. Billy Napier, the coach at Louisiana, is now headed over to Florida. Washington State hired their defensive coordinator, Jack Dick. Meanwhile, Kalen DeBoer of Fresno State heads over to Washington. Sonny Dukes, uh, Sonny Dykes, I should say, of, of SMU is now headed to TCU. Right, lastly, again, a player that a guy that a lot of Auburn fans know here. He was Auburn's offensive coordinator not that long ago under Gene Chizik. He's now headed to SMU as their new head coach. Texas Tech also hired a new guy in Baylor, associate head coach and linebackers coach Joey McGuire. How do you feel about Napier of Florida? It's an interesting move. I, I like him. I think that he was ready for a Power 5 job. Yeah. I think, it's, I think that this is a good time for him to go 
and I like the move for for Florida and for uh, Billy Napier there. He was, I think he's a guy that's kind of taking that next step. He's kind of like where I, he's where I think Lincoln Riley was probably about four or five years ago. I, I just don't want to be like another Jim McIlvain, you know, right. like like where he's good but he's not it's Florida not, good right, enough. Right, everybody's right. waiting for Spurrier because mm-hmm. they're still thinking Steve Spurrier is going to come back. For sure, yeah, uh, and he. He ain't walking through that door, as, right. Rick, as Rick Pitino would say. <laughs> exactly. Let's take a look at some of the vacant uh, coaching positions. Of course, Oklahoma's now vacant. Well, this graphic it came out right before the news that LSU plans to have an agreement in place with mm. Notre Dame head coach Brian Kelly. That's the word out tonight. Still nothing official on that. We'll maybe see if something's different coming up tomorrow. Meanwhile, a lot of Power 5 jobs and a lot of interesting jobs also open. Virginia Tech open. Duke Parting ways with David, David Cutcliffe after 14 years. FIU is now open. Parting ways with Butch Jones. Fresno State, as we talked about earlier, it's open. Also, Troy is open. Uh, a team here in state after parting ways with Chip Lindsey. Uh, that was a, a couple of weeks ago. Meanwhile, some word out today that Jacksonville State has also found its new man, Rich Rodriguez of uh, my, uh, Michigan fame, mm-hmm. as well as uh, West Virginia fame and, and, Ar- and uh, Arizona fame. He will now be the head coach of the Gamecocks, replacing head coach John Gross. That uh, press conference set for 2 o'clock tomorrow. I'll be uh, at that presser uh, tomorrow as JSU uh, uh, makes a splash higher. Uh, one other thing we wanted to talk about, though, is the college football playoff. Mm-hmm. We Alabama still has a chance to work their way in coming up on Saturday. Meanwhile, though, after Ohio State's loss to Michigan, no Buckeyes and obviously no Clemson. This is really big as far as how it relates to recent dominance by the Tide and the Tigers. I mean, those three teams have dominated mm-hmm. the college football playoff. You right. look at how many appearances they've been in. You look at their one loss, Alabama, with uh, you know, 11 games that right. they played in. Clemson, 10 games that they've played in. Uh, they've won six of the seven national championships. Mm-hmm. The only other team to win a national championship since this started was LSU. Right. Uh, so if... You know that Clemson and Ohio State aren't going to be there. Right. Uh, so if though if Alabama's not there also, mm-hmm. that really is awkward for right. the college football playoff. In the last year of the you know four best teams mm-hmm. uh, being represented, um, it, it, I, I don't I'm not sure how I feel about that. Everyone wants there to be new teams. Right. But there's something very I don't want to say comforting, but something you 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 start to realize, okay, we've had some really good games. Mm-hmm. We've had some great matchups. You want to see the best teams play, not just different teams. Right, exactly. And we'll see if the Tide can punch their way in. But if they do not, and they're an underdog for the first time in 92 games, yep. if they do not, it's, wow. uh, as you said, as you mentioned, it's, it's going to be a really sh- a sea change mm-hmm. as far as what we've known with the college football playoff since its inception. And don't forget that long win streak they have against the East. They haven't lost to any exactly. teams since 2010. Exactly. We'll find out if you think that they will. Coming up in our next segment, and we'll have our picks. We'll also talk a little Major League Baseball. The world champion Atlanta Braves will now play in division against one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. We'll talk about both coming up next.